God started the formation of the world with a word. In the beginning, God said, let there be light, and there was light. God also said that as his children, if we got faith the size of a mustard seed, we can speak to mountains in our life and cause these mountains to move. times of storm, you need to run to Jesus. Yes, sir. Because he can be your shelter if you let him. Yes, sir. He's been my shelter for years. Amen. In years of my ignorance, amen. Amen. In years when I was too young to know any better, amen. and even in my old age, and when they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, amen. he's still my shelter. Amen in my time of storm. Amen. Thank you all for joining us this morning. For all those in the audience, thank you all so much. Our audience is getting bigger and bigger. Amen. 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 Yeah, folks coming out to grab the word. I like that. Amen. Like sometimes Amen. ministers like to think they're the most important thing. People come out here to hear me. I like to come to hear you. <laughs> we'll come for the word if you're giving it. Amen. 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 And I want to thank you all out there in the audience who continuously come out or, or, or turn your or, Palm Pilot dial to hear us. Mm -hmm. I want to end it. I want to, um, right now, I want to offer a challenge to my class of 1980. I know some of you all are watching right now. I will call your name, but I ain't going to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to challenge you, though, that you live in this area. You come out and you see your boy. All right. Come out and see me. I'd like to see your face. Amen. 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 I want you to see my face, too, to see what all of LA is doing for me. Amen. I'm still crazy. Yeah, he's still crazy from high school. Y'all come out and see me. So we can support you in your endeavor. I know you have some, some of y'all have some things in the community that you want some support for. We're going to do that for you. We want you to support us too. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Because we are a community church, and that's what we do. Amen. I want to thank you all again for joining us, and I hope God has been good to you. I see my baby and my grandson in the audience. Amen. 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 I'm so glad to see him. Who's the baby? I'm going to tell him who's going after work. After, after I get out of the stand, they be asking about who the baby is. I'm going I'm to let my daughter know who the real baby in every relationship is. Oh, Amen. Okay. <laughs> he going to be upset with her. <laughs> <laughs> glad to see him anytime time they come. We won't be up here long. But I want to talk to you all a little bit about what you allow on your spiritual plate. I want to talk to you about what you consume, what you eat as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Because I want you to know that if you're not careful, what you eat will at some point become what you are. Mm -hmm. Whether you want to be that or not. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about, preacher? Let me, let me get into my lesson. Let me let the Holy Spirit speak to you a little bit about it, because I don't want to give too much of my opinion about stuff. You know how folks are. That's just his opinion. He don't know. Well, I know who does know. This knows. So, we're going to talk from it. Brother Preston, if you would, put our assigned scriptural reading for the day up on the board. I'm going to point out something to you before we Get into our lesson. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse number 7 reads, For as, thank you, Brother Press, for reading it to our early, and for the outstanding prayer to all you brothers, the boy. I could just sit back and listen to prayers. I could. Amen. Mm -hmm. Boy, he thinks in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. Eat and drink, he says to you. <coughs> but his heart is not with you. Mm -hmm. When you read that by itself, you wonder what? What is, what is going on with that scripture? I know people quote it all the time. People quote it all the time. But I want to give you a little background about that scripture. Maybe you, you have a, a different view about it once we study it. In, the, in other words, everything you choose to consume or allow into your life, including the food, the people, and what you feed your mind, consumes you. Luke 6.45, a good man 
out of the good treasure of his heart bring forth good. Y'all with me yet? Mm -hmm. I told them we had some people in the audience, so I think they might want to hear you all. So I'm going to give you something to say amen about today. Amen? Amen. amen. Watch this. Let the church say amen. 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 And y'all saw to say amen about it. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. Mm -hmm. For out of the abundance oh, yes. of the heart, his mouth speak. Right. When you hear people talk bad to you, they got a lot of talking bad in them. They got an abundance of it. Mm -hmm. It's only when they got an abundance of it that it covers fields. Right. Amen. When the last time you had so much love for folks, it just came out. Amen. Amen. How about out of the abundance of their heart, the mouth speaks good. <laughs> for as he thinks, so as he Eat and drink. Eat and drink what? Goodness. Amen. 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 Uh, what you talking about, brother teacher? All right. Everything you choose to consume or allow into your heart, it consumes you or influences you. Mm -hmm. Influence how you feel, how you think, and the results you get. My wife was a 49 er fan. <laughs> now she's a cowboy fan. <laughs> because I influenced her <laughs> to the point Everything we had was related was Dallas Cowboy. It consumed all. Y'all with your preacher yet? Everything you I eat and drink, cowboy. I painted my truck blue. It consumed me. Amen. You ask her, she'll tell you it consumed her too. <laughs> Who you hang out with, what you listen to, is going to shape you. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Not will shape you. It's going to shape you. You're not a cusser. Go hang out in a place where people cuss all the time. Mm -hmm. You'll come home, you the cuss word, and won't even do it. What? Where that come from? I don't, are you hanging out with cussers? Mm -hmm. Remember the text on the account of Jesus entered the temple in the courts in Mark 11, 15 when he entered, he was angry. That's right. He drove out the money changers mm -hmm. with a whip because they were dishonoring God's house through their fact out financial dealing. They were taking abuse, <laughs> taking a, 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 a advantage of the poor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need this type of zeal too. We need this zeal to type of to drive out stuff that's not popular in our lives. Mm -hmm. We Said in our Sunday school this morning, it's hard sometimes to fight habit. Because habit becomes a welcoming thing to us. It's easier for us to do it than to just, you know. Right? <laughs> Let me quote something. Somebody famous said, I think it was Denzel Washington. In order to get somewhere you've never been, you got to do something you've never done. Amen. We can't keep doing the same thing and expect to get somewhere in life. Amen. If we can keep consuming the same type of foods, we're going to get the same type of bowel movement. Amen. That's true, man. Did you hear you preach? That's true, man. We're on a diet of bad food all the time and wondering why. What? What? When I go in the bathroom, it just smells so funny. <laughs> Yeah, you preachers and got way crazy up here this morning trying to make a point. Amen. If you don't eat greens, some home cooked meals, the end results gonna look the same. Amen. Y'all what you preach? Oh yeah. What you consume, you become how many times don't raise your hand, don't raise your hand. How many times you've gone to a place, you seen people in fast food restaurant, you go, ooh, they look like what they sell. Oh. <laughs> they got the body of a corn dog. <laughs> Nobody done that. Look at you laughing. That preacher there is so crazy. I know y'all do it. Talking about y'all. Oh, I've done it. I've repented of it. But I've done it. Any preacher out there said he ain't. I don't know what he telling you. But it ain't a fool too. <laughs> If you want to change, become a better version of yourself, become healthier or more successful, 
You have to change your behavior. Amen. 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 Yes, and your consumption. Yes, sir. Amen. Spiritual life, emotional life, is just like physical life. If I physically put food in my body that's not healthy for me, my body is going to continue to look unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Spiritually, if you continue to put stuff in you that's unhealthy, spiritually you're going to be unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, if you continue to put things that are unhealthy for you in your emotional brain sack, you're going to be emotionally unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Remember what the Bible says. A man is literally what he thinks. Mm -hmm. Proverbs yeah. 27. But, like I said, let's explore this verse a little bit. In, if you take the phrase, as a man thinks, on his own, by itself, it could, it, could, it could have a few meanings. But to understand it completely, I want to look at verse number 6 and 7 of Proverbs 23 together. Proverbs 23 focuses on giving advice or life advice on how to handle yourself in various situations. I don't know about you, but I need to know how to handle myself in various situations. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share a tidbit of this with you all in the audience. Anybody in the audience want to ask me a little bit more about it later, you can do it. I needed to know how to control myself yesterday when my dog bit a handler. Because if I didn't know how to handle myself, I'd probably have to call for a person to tell me you how to stand in for me today. <laughs> but knowing how to handle yourself, even in your in Rome, mm -hmm. is what Christians must learn to do. Amen. All right? It says, verse number six and seven, six says, six says, do not eat the bread of a miser. M-I-S-E-R. First of all, if I'm studying, I need to know what a miser is. Amen. All right? So I look up the word miser. It says, a miser is defined as a penny pincher. A downright greedy person. Now let's go back to the verse. Do not eat the bread of a miser, a miser, or a penny pincher, or a cheap person, nor desire his delicacies. Mm -hmm. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Mm -hmm. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up mm -hmm. and waste your pleasant words. Mm -hmm. yep. Watch out there now. Preach, do something with that for me. Do something with that. I'm glad you asked for it. When this verse was written, it was culturally a good idea for when people visited you, you fed them. Mm -hmm. Mississippi know about that. Y'all mm -hmm. still are doing that now. Mm -hmm. Folk cannot visit you and say, I'm not home. Mm -hmm. No, I just stopped through here to see you. Man, hold on now. Mm -hmm. You got to eat something with me. Hello. Mm -hmm. Culturally, that what was expected of people when they knew they had folk coming in, right? Mm -hmm. Now, think about what a miser will be thinking about if you come to visit them mm -hmm. and they got to fix you something to eat. Mm -hmm. They pen and pinch us, right? Mm -hmm. I can see you now sitting at the table. This bread don't taste right. He ain't put all the salt he need to put in that bread. He a pen and pinch her. So what do you think a pen and pinch is thinking when you come to visit with them? Hmm. A, a miser would be begrud begrudging a host who would be hospitable only because it was culture expectation. I'm going to let you eat. But that's because other folks know you're visiting me. Now, but I ain't, I ain't trying to be feeding you all this. You know what we going to eat? I got some leftovers. <laughs> you don't eat chicken. Who don't eat chicken? Well, I got some beans left over. You're going to get some beans and cornbread. <laughs> Used to be if folk came to visit you, you bring out the finest thing. Mm -hmm. Woo, I've been waiting to see when I was, was going to cook this roast. <laughs> Y'all coming when now? Mm -hmm. Amen. Roasted potatoes and carrots and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you're a penny pincher, you're going to get potatoes and carrots. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to be wondering why you still hurt. Mm -hmm. Ain't no more food for you. Mm -hmm. So you see why he said, don't eat that food. Amen. 
Because he said one thing, but he begrudging the fact that you're here. Mm -hmm. The only reason he's letting you eat, because other folk know you're over here mm -hmm. and it's customary. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. The verse later say, if you do eat the mice of food, you're bumming it up. Mm -hmm. That don't mean that you're actually bumming up the food. It means that the food or the conversation will not satisfy you. Amen. Because it wasn't shared genuinely. Mm -hmm. If somebody is a pen and pitcher when they come to your house with their food, what do you think the conversation going to be like? Right. <laughs> They're going to guard it. I don't, know, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't really want them to be here. Yeah. Woo! I just asked them about the weather, and that was 20 minutes. They still <laughs> I ain't gonna ask them how little, I ain't gonna ask about the children doing. Lord, that murder, they'll stay here long. We penny pinch mm -hmm. If the mindset is that way, they're gonna treat you a certain way. That's what the Bible said. Don't eat it. Don't be around them. Don't, be, don't even entertain that conversation. Here's the question things that make you go, hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're consuming goodness and love, why can't I see it? Mm -hmm. Our children all said amen up in heaven, nobody else. Mm -hmm. I know my grandma used to whoop me so bad. Woo! And say, I love you. That's why I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. And she whooped me until she finished talking. And she liked to talk. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, at the end of that whooping, I tell her from time to time, don't love me no more. That's right. <laughs> amen. If you love somebody, it'll show mm -hmm. in what you do for them. Mm -hmm. right. We're always talking about how we love the Lord. And we ain't going to get out of our normal life routine well, for him not one time. Mm -hmm. So the brother, but I called and told him, look, I have a little situation out here. I need your help. And your favorite show just came on. <laughs> Lord, how much she going to have to wait? <laughs> well, are, are, are you sure you're in a place where you're going to be all right for about an hour? <laughs> <laughs> an hour? I'm out here on this hour and it's dark. Yeah, but did you pull all the way off the road? <laughs> I'm coming. I just can't come right now. That's right. Mm. Huh? Well. We love our folks enough to put them on pause. Mm. Mm. Things that make you go. Hmm. See, you don't love me with the type of love that I need you to love me if my being in trouble don't interfere with your comfort. Amen. 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 Good teaching. If my being in trouble don't interfere with your comfort and you coming to take care of what trouble I have, you don't love me. Amen. Not like you should. Amen. Not like you say. Amen. Not like a Christian's post to. Amen. <laughs> Let me show you something and read your story that lets me be yours. This story entitled, The Bishop's Gift. Once a church had fallen on hard times, only five members were left. So I like what we were. The pastor and four others, all of them were over 60 years old. In the area where their church was, a retired bishop lived. It occurred to the pastor to ask the bishop if he could offer any advice that would save the church. The pastor and the bishop spoke for a long time, but when the pastor asked for advice, the bishop simply said, I have no advice for you. The only thing I can tell you is that the Messiah is one of you. The pastor returned to the church and told others what the bishop said. In the months that followed, the old church members pondered the words of the, of the bush, bishop. The Messiah is one of us. They asked themselves. As they thought about this possibility, they all began to treat each other with extraordinary respect on the off chance that one of them might be the Messiah. And on top of that, because each of them might be the Messiah, they started treating themselves with extraordinary care. As time went by, people who visited the church noticed the aura of respect and gentle kindness that surrounded the five old members of the small church. They began to bring their friends, and their friends brought more friends. Within a few years, the small church had once again become a thriving church thanks to the bishop's gift. Here's the moral of the story. Make happy those who are near and those who are far 
will come. Amen. 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 That's true. Make happy the people who are in your life right now. Mm -hmm. We worry all the time. These churches, this pandemic and things going through. <coughs> members ain't coming back. How's your church? My church is healthy. Yeah. All your members came back the one that didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> Are they in the congregation? They on Facebook. Amen. Well, well. I don't know how you did that, but none of my doing. Amen. Amen. Hello. Amen. My job is to get the word. Amen. Hopefully, they are happy on when they receive it. Amen. If they are, they'll tell somebody about this country preacher Amen. and this community church, and people will come. Amen. See, we think from time to time it's our job. We come, we become too consumed in doing stuff that ain't our business. Amen. We get too consumed on becoming the prognosticators of what God think, what we think that God all want in His church. We start thinking that God all want, God want all the poor, poor, poor pews filled, or, or God want everybody in my family to come, or God want. Stop being consumed by stuff that's not your business because after a while it'll consume you. And let me give you another little word of advice. You can't do nothing God can do. You can do all the consuming you want to do, and you can do all the talking you can want to do, and you can do all the begging you want to do, and you can do all the bothering you want to do, and you can do all the pestering you want to do, and you can do all the gossiping you want to do. You can't do nothing God can do about bringing people to Him. Amen. You can't. I can't. Only the Word can do that. Amen. The Bible says, for the sake of our lesson from the Word today, don't consume stuff that can turn you into something you know you can't be for God. Amen. Amen. We consume ourselves with grief. People die in our lives sometimes. We consume ourselves with grief. All we talk about is grief. Mm -hmm. Years later, all we talk about is grief. Well, I understand it's consuming us and it's part of us. But what else do we have to do? We have to live for the Lord, don't we? Yes. Where are we going to find time to do that? Well, and we consume. Amen. Some of us consume with other people's business. Uh -oh. Amen. We got some professional gossipers. <laughs> They got so to the point to where they don't even call themselves gossipers anymore. They call themselves other things, like, you know, you want to know? Come see me. Well. I be knowing. You be gossiping. <laughs> People who think they know everything or have to know everything, what's in his heart? Well, amen. What's in the heart of a person who knows it? Mm -hmm. What's in the heart of a person who takes your personal business to somebody that don't even, you don't even know? Mm -hmm. So, out of the abundance of that, just listen to people. Now, you're going you gonna to be able to pick these people out. You ain't going to have to say nothing. You ain't going to have to do nothing. Because why? The Bible says, out of the abundance of their heart, a whole lot of whatever's in there. Now don't leave out here telling nobody. I watched down that line. He preached about you today. Don't do that. Don't do that. Watch this video. Don't do that. I want you to watch this video on 1422. That pastor talking about you. Don't do that. All I'm trying to let you know is that if your consumption is about Stuff other than love, stuff other than love gonna come out. Amen. If it's about something other than goodness, something other than goodness gonna come out. Amen. At some point, what's in you coming out. Amen. The Bible said it's an abundance of it. You know it like it is. Go, you're washing dishes. You forget the water on. The water just running. What eventually is going to happen to the water? It's coming out because there's an abundance of it. Amen. Let's learn to consume stuff that's good for us. We don't have to worry about nobody always telling us 
what's good for us. Amen. See, I know what's good for me. I've reached a certain age where I don't have to let everybody be telling me what's good for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're going to say it like it is. I'll tell you just like the people out there don't want folks telling them stuff about what's good because they grown. <laughs> they say it differently out there. They say, I'm a grown man. Mm -hmm. I'm a grown woman. I don't need to be telling me nothing. Mm -hmm. I don't care if he is a preacher. <laughs> That's true. You grown enough to know, or you should be grown enough to know, that if you're going to learn something from what the Bible or the, or the Lord would have you, you're going to learn it from a preacher. Mm -hmm. You gonna learn it from? I don't care what you said. <laughs> you talking back to it right now? I already know what you gonna learn it from. Amen. If not this old country preacher, some preacher gonna tell you something. Yes, sir. If you gonna see God's face in people. Amen. 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 One of these days, we're gonna lie down in feet. I am. Amen. Next Sunday's Easter. We're supposed to be celebrating the resurrection of our Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We're gonna be celebrating the sacrifice that He made for us. Amen. Right? What a better way for us to celebrate his love for us than for us to be doing as right as we can do about him. Amen. And stop consuming stuff that's going to get you in trouble. Yes, sir. When I was in high school, I got in way more trouble, Brother Lewis, than I should have. <laughs> I was consuming a lot of stuff that I had no business. Amen. 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 Yeah, Lord, that old preacher, they never thought he was going to be a preacher. Yes, I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. Amen. I learned my lesson. Amen. I let somebody tell me something. Amen. I listened to the word of the Lord. Amen. I grew into this person I am now, and I'm still growing. Amen. I'm still needing the Lord Amen. to tell me something. Amen. 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 I want to consume the word. I don't want to consume somebody's ideology. That's right. I want to consume the word. I don't want to consume somebody's tradition. Yes, sir. I want to consume the word. I don't want to consume something that somebody's saying just because it's been said that way. Mm -hmm. I want the word. That's right. Because it stands forever. Amen. Well, girl, you ain't going to be standing forever, but after me, the word going to be standing. If I'm, right. in, I'm, I'm in the word, it's going to be here. Right. Amen. Amen. I folks be talking about them years from now. That man sure stood on the word. Amen. 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 They talked about him like a dog. Why do people say that anyway? They talked about him like a dog. <laughs> like they don't talk about cats. <laughs> no, y'all talking about snakes in this area around here. If I see him first, he's a dead one. <laughs> the only snake I like is a dead snake. So why don't we say, talk about him like a snake? <laughs> oh, no, Pastor. They don't sound as good as talk about him like a dog. <laughs> hey, man, stop consuming all that negativity and talking about people like a dog, cat, or snake. <laughs> Talk, about Talk about him like he's a good, Christian. loving, Christian person Amen. that he is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Christian make mistakes. Yes, sir. Amen. Christian have shortcoming. Amen. How come he can't be a good man with a shortcoming? He always got to be a terrible liar. All right, then. Because yeah. he lied that one time. That's it. That's it. When did he lie to you? We weren't married oh, a year. How long y'all been married now? 42 years. Wow, he's still a liar. He's still a liar? He done brought you everything you want trying to make up for that lie. He's still a liar. <laughs> Amen. I know you out there, brother. I'm praying for you. <laughs> it ain't me. That's a good thing. Amen. 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 And it shouldn't be you. Amen. Consume the good word of the Lord. <laughs> Grow to be a better person than you are. No matter what anybody else say, God got it. Amen. Amen. I hope I've said something to you this morning to prick your heart. And then in, in our series of things that make you go, hmm, in today. Next Sunday, on Easter Sunday, we start our series of, there's a story in the Bible about that. Amen. And we're going to talk next Sunday about the little old lady who Jesus watched from across the room do more than anybody else in the room do. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about her next Sunday. I hope I've said something today to prick your heart, and I hope you join us again next Sunday at 11 o'clock as we get together again, ponder on the word of the Lord, and try to find out what it is that he would want me to do to live a better life tomorrow than I did today. Amen. But until then, be good to yourself and be good to each other. Join us again next Sunday.